dear students welcome to scholar is current affair classes before we get into the class i want to wish you all a happy new year and i wish the best for your preparations the first article is related to npas that is non performing assets this is related to your gs3 economy paper and uh, this is an article from the hindu okay so now let's see what is the article about actually in 2018 the bad loans that is nothing but the npas they have they were about almost 11.5 percentage of all loans okay and even the economic survey pointed out to this issue that the stress in both balance sheets of banks and the corporates has twin balance sheet problem so okay students this is an important concept it has been in uh, our exams even before so this is an important concept that you have to make a note of so the economic survey also pointed out to this problem through its twin def- uh, twin balance sheet problem okay so when did it start actually when did this twin balance sheet start uh, sheet problem start and how did it start in the later half of 2010 okay that is in the second half of 2010 the large corporates what they assumed was that the economic growth at that time was supposed to sustain for a longer time that was their assumption and based on that assumption they want they had some ambitious investment plans and to aid this investment plan the banks the uh, especially the public sector banks they also were lending money at cheap rate cheap interest rate so they the money was easily available for credit for investment purpose and these public sector banks who fuel the ambitious investment plans of the corporations suffered from the balance sheet problem because both the growth and demand in the economy did not take up as as per their assumptions because of the Im- reason that global financial crisis of 2008 had an impact on indian economy as well though indian economy was not suffering as as it was suffered in other countries like us it had an impact on our economy also and this high economic growth did not the expected high economic growth did not pick up so this led to the uh, that this affected the growth of both banks and the corporates so this problem of non performing assets and the twin balance sheet issue further got aggravated because of this covid pandemic okay so what has happened actually this covid 19 led national lockdown affected the businesses and revenue models across the uh, world across the globe we know that and many countries are suffering from it and in india particularly to in order to support the businesses during these hard times the government came up with moratorium on interest payment okay so under this the interest payments were uh, delayed and also the interest rates were reduced okay the main objective being to support the businesses and in addition to this the government also suspended the ibc that is insolvency and bankruptcy code so that the interests of the businesses are not affected which would actually have an impact on the jobs of uh, employment number also so there could be a possible job loss if this business is get affected so just because of these two aspects that is moratorium on uh, interest payments and the reduced interest rates and also suspension of ibc the actual issue actual impact of covid on npas is not clear because only when these measures are taken away there would be clear picture on how it has actually impacted and what is the current status of npas in india following rbi's normal loan classification if 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 the banks have followed if the government has allowed to have the regular normal loan classification norms then this uh, existing bad loans would have definitely increased during this covid but if because of these covid relief measures these are suspended as of now these uh, restrictions are uh, put in place so that the nps doesn't increase and it doesn't affect the businesses as well so where lies the solution though these relief measures are done in, to support the businesses there needs to be some sort of picture around this npa so that any uh, measure in future can be taken to tackle this issue okay so one way is to one way is for rbi to come up with the financial stability report that should present an updated assessment of the gross npas with the public as well as private sector banks and the existing capital adequacy of the banks so these things has to be the assessment has to be, for these things has to be done by the rbi in its financial stability report also the health of the banking as well as the non banking financial sector 
depends on the real economy though we come out with the real figure of npa it is not directly going to help anyway so only way is to recover the economy so to revive the economy the upcoming budget has to take some steps to ensure uh, either through monetary uh, incentives that are given uh, uh, to can be given to the uh, people to to increase the demand or it can support the businesses and other uh, even the banking sector to ensure that the economy revives so that the demand picks up and this npa doesn't further accumulate so these steps needs to be taken to tackle the problem of npas so this is all about npa problem uh, npa problem article students let's move on to the next article so the next article is on climate crisis this is again related to your gs3 paper environment section so this article is actually talking about how the current situation of climate change is going to have an impact throughout the globe the current recently held climate ambition summit showed the intensity of climate change and it also demanded the member states to declare climate emergency so this is a new type of emergency that is based on because of the climate change and to declare a climate emergency and to take drastic measures to reduce the greenhouse gas emissions okay so this was actually requested by in this climate ambition summit that was held virtually the current emergency shown to deal with covid has to be actually shown for climate change as well though we don't see the impact of climate change as drastically as covid it but it has a long term impact climate change has a long term impact and measures has to be taken and resource has to be deployed to accelerate the shift from fossil to non fossil and even cleaner source of energy to ensure the greenhouse gases uh, are reduced and climate adaptation is enabled so unless these measures are taken unless these measures are not taken the climate crisis is going to have a, is going to basically threaten the globe and that to non developed countries are going to face the heat of it at first so one aspect related to this climate adaptation is the quantifying of climate change itself okay so this is an idea that has been put forth by many science researchers as well as many institutions and this quantifying idea has to be promoted and supported because unless you don't quantify unless there is no tool to exactly quantify the impact of climate change it's hard to actually give policy support even even if any country wants to give some policy support it is difficult for them and and this quantifying tool also would be able to uh, resolve the developing versus non developing tussle okay so the countries that that are facing this uh, challenge of climate change there is a, uh, always a debate that goes be, between developed and non developed countries on which which countries have to reduce their emissions so this quantifying tool would basically give an idea about how to proceed with that though the idea is a good one it is not as easy as it sounds because it is difficult to exactly measure the impact of climate change the reason being identification and quantifying of a lot of interrelated domains is difficult so we under, we have to understand this climate change is not a single entity on its own it has impact on multiple other aspects so unless you can't quantify unless you don't identify and quantify them these aspects it would be way too difficult to quantify climate change as a whole for example let's say i mean wa- food security water security and energy security are all closely interlinked okay so these are these three securities are that to more important for developing and non developed countries and in that case this is when this is closely interlinked to climate change it would have an any any aspect related to Uh, policies taken related to climate change would have an impact on these aspects as well so only when we try to understand how this climate change has an impact on food energy and water security we would be able to actually quantify the impact of climate change itself and also our current accounting systems can handle only linear effects in single domains but this is not the case with climate change climate change impact is not linear because it has impact on multiple other aspects as i mentioned before for example let's say the loss of biodiversity what happened it actually shrunk the size of the wildlife habitat itself clearing of forests and jungles led to exposure of human and animals 
domesticated animals to the uh, wildlife species so what happened these wild species brought with them some unfamiliar virus that human beings were not exposed to earlier even this corona is such an uh, outcome outcome of such an uh, wildlife human contact to tackle these issues few things has to be nationalized so the first thing that needs rationalization is industrialization of food production this whole aspect has to be rationalized to ensure that it doesn't lead to climate change related issues and also animal husbandry in conditions that make the spread of infections as i said as much you get exposed to as much you expose animals domesticated animals to the wildlife species then they carry they also these animals also tend to carry some unfamiliar virus like corona okay sars and corona and next is rationalization of contamination of food chain so the whole food chain the from the from uh, land to plate the whole process may, needs to be ensured that it's not contaminated and in addition to this climate change as a whole should not be seen in a silo it has to be interlinked the interlinks related to climate change has to be studied properly and needs to be addressed comprehensively at global level because though efforts are needed at in, uh, individual national level it also needs global efforts to ensure that the whole issue of climate change is comprehensively addressed so students this is all for today's class hope you like the class subscribe to our channel and visit our platform for more content on current affairs as well as the static content so till next class happy learning see you bye bye